Despite typically strong sales, some have argued that the last 10 years have represented somewhat of a lull for Honda, at least in terms of engineering innovation. But the 10th generation Civic is kind of a rolling note to the doubters. One of Honda's volume leaders and probably its most culturally impactful car, this Civic has new technology and design just about everywhere you care to look. How does it look? Far from aping the mainstream, Honda has gone its own route with the exterior design, creating a sedan that's a little edgy, slightly futuristic, and mostly attractive, depending on the viewing angle and the viewer's attitude. I love the strong graphical design of the lighting elements and the sculptural hood and body sides, but I don't care for the high-waisted stance of the rear end. How's the storage? So the Civic trunk is actually near the top of its class in terms of cargo volume, and it's got a remarkably flat load floor that's also pretty comfortable. The cabin is a scavenger hunt of cubbies, door pockets, cup holders, and generally useful spaces for things and stuff. The center console is especially configurable, cool, and can fit just about anything I could imagine. Is it roomy? As with every modern compact car, emphasis has been placed on room for the driver and front seat passenger. That means that even at six foot five, I've got no trouble finding a good seating position and room for my limbs. The back seat space measures out to be in the middle of the segment, meaning there's room for kids or smaller adults as long as they're not sitting behind a driver my size. How does the interior feel? Now, especially in this top touring trim, with its leather seats and leather surfaces, everything in here feels really solid. And it's difficult to comment on what will happen in the long term, of course, but there are no obvious enemies to durability in this cabin either. Is it well equipped? Again, this is the top of the line Civic, so there are bells and whistles aplenty. Specifically, this trim level adds a 450 watt 10 speaker stereo and leather seats that are heated front and rear. Critically, it also gets the Honda Sensing suite of safety tech, active cruise control, lane keep assist, lane mitigation warning, forward collision mitigation, and other electronics are designed to keep you safe if you or the people around you are driving badly. How's the infotainment system? This is the company's new display audio system with a seven inch touchscreen, And I think it's better in just about every way than the dual screen system you'll find in cars like the Accord. It offers access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and has pretty simple to use software baked in. I still don't like the finicky volume control on the head unit, but the hybrid rocker switch touch control system on the steering wheel is actually pretty responsive. Is it a good daily driver? One of the things that you're likely to notice when you get behind the wheel of the Civic is that, first of all, it's pretty quiet for a compact car. It's really good relative to the class. Also, the suspension has been very well sorted it's smooth, the ride quality is good, and overall it just makes for a very comfortable cruiser. The other thing that's nice about the 1.5T equipped cars is that you've got plenty of power for merging on the highway, making passing maneuvers, and all of the sort of regular stuff that you're doing when you're commuting a lot. I would argue that the CVT equipped cars get a little bit droney sometimes when you're accelerating, but that's a pretty mild complaint. Is it fun to drive? Yeah, the cool thing about this Civic is, even though it's not the Civic Si or the Civic Type R that we know are coming and are excited for, you can feel the bones of a really good compact sports sedan in this car. Uh, the chassis is really responsive, the turn-in is quick, and you really have the ability to change direction smoothly when you want to. The other great thing about this package is the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the two liter naturally aspirated engine that come in the more basic versions of the Civic. I think that it's revvy and it's fun to drive and it sounds pretty good, but the turbo torque is easy to get used to and its responsiveness allows you to have a lot of fun when you decide that you need to. How's the fuel economy? Match the 1.5 liter turbo engine with Honda CVT transmission and you get impressive results. 
This Civic is rated to get 42 miles per gallon on the highway and 31 in the city. Considering all the power, the only problem with that setup is driving with enough restraint to see those EPA numbers in real life. How much is it? Every compact car on sale in the U.S. is competitively priced. This is a cutthroat space. But the Civic range tends to command a small premium at every trim level, with the base car starting at $18,640, the Touring Ass $26,500, and our test car has an MSRP of $27,335. Go ahead, insert your car I'd rather have for almost $30,000 complaint here. We'll look the other way. What are the negatives? To be honest, there aren't a lot. Honda's gonna pair this 1.5T with its six-speed manual, and that'll eliminate the kind of only driving bitch that I still have about the car. Beyond that, the only negative is the price premium, which has the potential to be a slightly larger premium when dealer incentives are figured in down the road. Who should buy it? I won't say this often in Why Buy videos, but I think the Civic Sedan is good for most drivers that I can think of. It's fun to drive, it's easy to drive, it's practical, and it stands up really well against the competition. If you're looking for a normal sedan, you can't do much better than this. Hey all, if you liked our Why Buy video on the Honda Civic, you should subscribe to this channel. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, or go to MotorOne.com to read our reviews.